I'm here with Maria San Pedro Iglesias, a juvenile court judge in Miami, Florida. She's been working recently on the Barahona case involved with where Victor and the other two children who were taken uh, from the Barahonas will end up. Uh, thank you for coming by. Today. You're welcome. Um, uh, we've, we've been covering the Barahona case for a while uh, from when, when it started. Actually, on this show, I think it was the, the, first, show, the first real news story outside of Belen that we covered. So it, it kind of really hit home here. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm excited to, to get to talk to you a little bit more about that case and also what you do. So uh, to start off, what duties do you have as a juvenile court judge? We see all cases of all children that are removed from homes, children that are abused, abandoned, or neglected in Dade County. Okay. And so the, what, what would you say are the bulk of the cases that, that come through your, your chambers? Um, in a nutshell, it's the children. Those are the three magic words, the kids that are abused, abandoned, or neglected. It can be children that are victims of child abuse, children that are born cocaine exposed, uh, marijuana exposed, children that come from homes of domestic violence, um, homes where the parents have passed away for whatever reason, um, children that are left, I don't know, at the footsteps of a hospital, children that are homeless because of the economy, children that the parents have lost their jobs and can't handle the economic stress so they drop them off somewhere and just leave them. Any type of situation that makes them abused, abandoned, or neglected. Right. And, and how did you get involved in this kind of, uh, in this kind of court? I mean, is, did you always know that you wanted to do this or how did, how did it progress that you became a, a juvenile court judge? Um, I practiced law for 20 years and I wanted to run for judge. I, you can either be appointed by the governor or you can run for election. I ran for election and then you get assigned to one of the divisions and I was assigned to the juvenile court division. Okay. And uh, what factors come into play in making rulings on cases regarding juveniles? I mean, is it, uh, I, guess, I guess what I'm asking is um, what, you know, for, for the outsider, the person who doesn't know how juvenile courts work, um, is it trial based? Is it, you know, prosecutor, defendant? How does, how does that work? Take us inside, I guess, the courtroom uh, when you have to make a ruling. There's a thousand players. It's very different than the regular setting. There are no juries. There is a prosecutor, but it is called the state. It's not called the normal prosecutor. There is a defense attorney. There is usually a guardian, which is the person that represents the wishes of the child. There's usually a caseworker, which is the person that's working the case for the state of uh, Florida. And there's a bunch of players. Um, a child protective investigator, there's psychologists that are interviewing the parents, the foster parents, the children, there's many times teachers, um, evaluators that come to see how the children are doing, but the main players are the state of Florida, the defense attorney for the parents, but usually there's two, one for the mother and one for the father, and the guardian at litem, which represents the child. Okay. And in regard to the guardian, do, does the child's wishes, does that play a big part in, in these cases? Or you know, how, how much of an impact does that have is in, in making decisions? It obviously depends on the age of the child, but it's the only courthouse that the child's wishes are really taken into account. That's very interesting. Um, now, you have kids of your own, I know. Um, working in the juvenile district is, 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 is division, is, that, does that, is it hard for you? I mean, I'm sure you see some cases that really hit home. And how does that affect you in, in doing your job? Um, it probably makes you very, makes me more grateful as to my children. It makes you realize that what I've always perceived as a normal home is not normal in many houses. Um, I value very much having dinner where four. My children have the same father. Their father is my husband. That's not very normal in my court. Most, par most kids have one father. The other child has another father. It's very seldom the husband because most of the mothers don't have a husband. Uh, many times the mothers have no clue who the father is. Um, so I've come to respect and appreciate that what makes up a family is not necessarily what I thought makes up a family. 
you appreciate your house hold much more. Uh, you realize that lots of these kids don't have a chance in life because it's a vicious circle and they don't learn values and they don't learn what's important. It's just a vicious circle. But lots of times getting to this core is really what gives them a chance because then lots of times they get to live in a foster home that gives them that sense of family and that's hopefully what saves them. And I'm sure for you that gives you a sense of accomplishment at the end of the day, right? Yes. It's, um, lots of people see it very depressing. Lots of people want to get out of this court as soon as possible. We have a rotation system in the court system and you have to commit at least three years and lots of people want to get out. I really would like to stay in child welfare. I enjoy it very much. I find it very rewarding. Um, I don't see it negatively. Most of the time I see it as a rewarding experience at the end of the day because you can give them a chance to make, get a better life for them. So yes, I see it very rewarding. That's very nice. Um, it, now moving on to the Barahona case, what, what exactly <laughs> is the case that you were presiding over? I am not presiding over the criminal aspect. The Barahonas have obviously been charged with a multitude of criminal charges, including first degree murder. Um, I am not deciding on their criminal case. I am deciding on what's going to happen to the children. The state, in my case, is seeking to terminate their parental rights. And in my case, both parents have already, they decided not to go to trial. Again, not on the criminal case. The criminal case is pending. On the children's case, they have both surrendered their parental rights, so the children are free for adoption. And that this case stays with you until those children are adopted, is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. And so you, you had to deal with these people, I'm sure, at some point, the Barahonas. Was that difficult, knowing um, some of the, the, the things that have been out in the news and that's public knowledge? Is, was that a complicated situation for you? It was very difficult because obviously I've seen them like everybody else on the news. Um, I have my own personal feelings about them. I can't reveal my feelings in front of them. I have to treat them like I treat anybody else that comes to my courtroom, hopefully with respect and with some type of justice. Um, they came in with tons of security. Particularly, Mr. Barahona came in with a lot of security because he's on suicide watch and he is, he has a lot of death threats. So it was a very difficult situation. And would you say that makes this case a little unique in comparison to anything else that you deal with on a regular basis? Sure. I mean, there's an, other cases that have come in that have factors almost as bad, but there's few cases that have received the publicity that this case has received. Right. And um, uh, you were talking about this a little bit before. Uh, so so it, had this case gone on further, and actually maybe still, um, does, for example, Victor, uh, their son, their adopted son, when, when he's going to be adopted eventually, uh, of course, he's still in the hospital now, still no, working. No, he's not oh, in the he's hospital. Not? He's oh, in okay. a therapeutic foster therapeutic home. Therapeutic foster home. So I'm sure he's still going through recovery and, but when, he, when it is time for him to move on, um, he, would he, he would have, you said, some kind of uh, opinion in where he ends up? Yes. That's, that's very good to know. Uh, I mean, obviously, with the situation that he's gone through with, you know, these parents and his, his original parents, it, you, you would hope that eventually he can end up in, in a good, solid home where uh, things can go. And uh, I, I think a lot of people don't know about the other two children that were involved in this. You know, they've kind of taken the back seat because Victor was Nubia's uh, twin brother. Right. Um, but I, I guess they were in, a, in as almost as bad of a situation, not as much with the physical abuse, but, you know, you, you also have to make a decision on them, too. And would they be going, do you think, to the same place, or how does that work? Do, uh, are they like a package with, with Victor? Are they, you know, brothers and sisters that they're going to go together, or are they separate? Will they be separated? I don't think a determination has been made yet. They're not um, blood siblings. They were from other um, parents. Um, their abuse is totally different, and I think that they would probably be treated differently. Okay. And uh, 
does this case, I'm sure when you look over cases, you have to, you have to compare and find similar cases in order to make a ruling. Um, what does anything, is there anything that, that you've seen or that you've, you've researched or looked into that is similar to this that you might look for, you know, to, to help you in making a decision had you had to make that decision? No, I think really what's going to make, um, influence this case a lot will be what the therapists come up with. There's a lot of therapists working on this case, a lot of psychiatrists, a lot of psychologists, and their opinion will have a great influence on this decision. And do they meet with you directly or? No, with reports. No, reports. Okay. Um, they may meet with me, but in an open forum in court. Okay. Um, so, well, thank you, for, thank you for coming by. I really appreciate it. I, I know everybody who watches our show will, will appreciate it. You're I think you've, you've provided a, a very different outlook on this case that not a lot of people get to see. So thank you very much. You're welcome.